Hey everyone, Pete from LA Doors and More, and today I am going to teach you how to install a continuous hinge on a commercial steel hollow metal door. And generally there's two reasons for that. It's very easy to do, and once you know how to do this, it's a great tool in your arsenal, and you'll be able to make a lot of repairs and do a lot of installs and make some great money in the process. Now in this demonstration, I'm using the Pemco brand continuous hinge. You can buy them online for about 100, 150 bucks. It's also called a geared hinge. So there are generally two reasons why you would want to replace conventional hinges with a continuous hinge. Number one would be if you need to repair the door. If you need to move the door side to side or up and down, you cannot do that with these hinges in a commercial door because the door is metal so you can't move the hinges on the door and the jam is also metal so the hinges cannot be moved so in that case you would get rid of these and install a continuous hinge and then you can move the door around the second scenario would include what we are going to do today you need to replace the door like we do and we could not find a door that had the exact same hinge locations as our existing jam so what we're gonna do is remove the hinges and install the continuous hinge and install the door. And that's what I'm gonna show you. And once you know how to do this, you'll be able to make a lot of good money doing it on your own. Step one is to remove the door and hinges. This one didn't have a door. So we're gonna skip that. We're gonna remove the hinges. And when you buy the continuous hinge, it generally comes with filler plates to cover these up. So we're gonna get the hinges off, put on our filler plates. Here's the filler plate, they go on here. You don't need them, they don't have a functional purpose, but they just look much nicer, it's more professional. If you wanted to go the extra step, you could even paint these to match your jam. And we wanna put the, uh, the cover plates on the door as well, so we're gonna pop off this tab here that you would use with the uh, hinges. Just comes off. We'll just screw on the filler plate like that. The next step is to mount the hinge to the frame. You can see my hinge is too long. And uh, you want your hinge to be just a little bit smaller than your actual opening. So I'm going to cut this thing right here. So I would recommend using an angle grinder with a fine cutoff blade. You don't want to try to do these with a hacksaw or a reciprocating saw because you need a very clean cut. You want to make sure this thing still works. You can see the insides, these are gears. And that's why you want a very clean cut there because this thing still has to work. That's going to be fine. So you see, I've got my hinge just below my opening and the hinge is off the ground. Now you see this hinge has these bigger holes on one side and the, just the small holes on one side. The small holes go into the jam. These bigger holes go into the door, and I'll show you why later. You see where the hinge bends? You could actually bring this thing out quite a bit, as much as you have to. It could come all the way out here, but you don't want to go back there too far. See that? We've, we've lost our holes. Ideally, I want the center of the hinge to be even with the edge of the jam, if I can. Can't always control that, but right there, that's going to be perfect. What I'm going to do is just mark a hole right here. So there's my first screw hole. I'm going to pre-drill that and start mounting the hinge. Now here's the bag of screws that come with it. Comes with a little Allen wrench. I'll show you that. These are the through bolts. These are going to go in those big holes that'll go through the door. Those get paired with these. And then you have all of these self-tapping sheet metal screws. These will go into the jam and into the door as well. So let's get started with one of these. It's easier to pre-drill. Sometimes the self-tapping screws will go right into the metal. And sometimes there's concrete behind here. Sometimes there's just air. Sometimes there's wood. There's nothing behind here. So we can go right in with our screws. Now that that hole's in there, I'm gonna put the first screw in. 
With the first screw in, you don't have to check and see if this thing is plumb. It's forgiving, it moves around a little bit, but you wanna make sure it's lined up with the jam. I just eye it up and it all looks pretty good. You wouldn't want it sticking out like that. You could tell that's obviously crooked and you wouldn't want it way in there. So when I pull this out, you see that looks pretty good. So now that I know that this is where I want it, I'm gonna leave that screw in and I'm gonna mark the rest of these holes. Now I could just leave this in place, put the rest of my screws in or leave this in place and pre-drill them, but I don't wanna risk uh, getting paint or dust or metal stuck in this gear. So I'm gonna take this off, pre-drill all of these, then put my screws back in. Now that I have my hinge in place and everything's working, I wanna put the door into the opening and get yourself some shims, some wedges, because you literally wanna wedge this door into position the manner that you want it. And then you screw in the hinge. Little trick I do is uh, I got a little pencil mark here. You could use a piece of tape. That's the center of my strike plate. And I'm gonna put a line right here in the center of my lock hole, because I want those to line up or they have to be pretty close. So I know the top of my strike is there and the bottom of my strike is there. So my strike has to fall somewhere within there. I can modify this if I have to, but it's easier if they line up. Okay, so I just kicked the door into place <laughs> and I have the room. Obviously it needs to go up, it's rubbing here. It's not rubbing there. The door is actually going like this. And the good news is I still have plenty of room over here so I can move it around. So since the door is going like that, I want to kick it like that. The first thing I want to do is get it up off the ground. So I'm going to put a wedge underneath here. So knowing that I'm going to have to lift the door up, it's best to put it in place with some sort of pry bar so you can, you can do that. So I'm going to start over here at the hinge side. And I just want to, you know, I want to get like a quarter inch or so of space underneath there. And now I'm gonna pull up this side and get it evened out. Remember, everything doesn't have to be perfect. We just, we need the clearance so that the door works. And it doesn't rub, of course. We've got a nice even gap here. The whole door could even go over this way a little bit. Well, my spaces are good. The door could go up a little bit higher. I don't want to look at my lock here. So I've still got room because there's the top of my hole. So this whole thing could go up a little bit higher because I want to do, I want to get this up a little higher. Also, you don't want it too low because you don't know when the door opens, you don't know if it's going to scrape over here or not. So I'm going to just raise it up a little bit more. See, now I've got a nice even gap up there. I'm going to put a wedge here, pull that out a little bit, and that gives me a nice even gap here, and my lock is lined up. I look around, i got plenty of clearance on the bottom. When I look over here on this side, I do have a, a little bit of a gap between the door and the jam. So this should work. So here's what I do next. I'm going to close the hinge, and I'm just going to put in a couple of the screws like three or four screws. And that will hold the door in place for now so that I can test it. So double check all of our clearances again. Everything looks good. Let's put a screw in here. I don't need to, to uh, pre-drill these because I know with these metal doors, it goes in pretty easy. With the three screws in the door, that should hold it. You don't want to put them all in because you never know. It might not work for some reason, but let's test it. So we'll pull this stuff out. I pulled the wedges out. The door did not move. It's looking good. So look at this. Uh-oh. Look at that. A little bit of rubbing right there. So, got a couple of options. We need to do is lift this door up, you know, at least another eighth of an inch. That's why you don't put all the screws in. You can also take the door off and grind it, but I don't want to do that, so let's reposition the door. 
So I gotta get it up at least an eighth of an inch. We know we have room here to move the lock up. And we have room up here. So what I wanna do is get the door top up to here. We're gonna put the wedges back underneath the door, take the screws out, lift the whole door up, and then screw it back in. So we moved the door up higher. Double check, all of our gaps look good. I don't want to put the screws back into the same locations because it might go back into the old screw hole. So I'm going to use new screw locations. Now that's done, we'll check again. No more rubbing, beautiful. So you don't want to feel any binding. It should be nice and smooth and it should also be flush to the frame. In other words, the top shouldn't be sticking out like that or the bottom shouldn't be sticking out like that. This is nice and flush, I can see. We're good. We're gonna put the rest of the screws in first, then we're gonna put in the through bolts. These are self-tapping sheet metal screws. So they have essentially a little drill bit on the tip. So you can pre-drill these but the skin of the metal door is actually very soft, so just push on them real hard, you can do it. In fact, even a 16-year-old girl could do it, and you'll feel it. And with all the screws in there, that will hold the door, but over the course of time, they could come loose. So we're gonna put these through bolts in. So here's the through bolt uh, sleeve. Use a 3 8 inch drill bit, and we're gonna drill this hole, and then from the other side, we'll pound the, uh, the through bolt through, and then this screw will get screwed into that. Once you've got the hole drilled, we go to the other side. With a 3 8 inch bit, this through bolt will just fit through and you see it has this little knurling here. That's why you don't want to make this hole too big. Tap that in so it stays in place. Sometimes these can be tricky. You gotta reach over the door or you need an assistant to hold it for you. I later discovered after doing so many of these that it's very easy to insert the through bolt through the outside and then hold it in place with some painter's tape or duct tape. And that holds it well enough to get the screw started. Once you get it started, it's fine. On this side. So, we'll put in a bunch of these. Now sometimes, for whatever reason, you'll find you can't get all the through bolts in there. We've got six, and that's plenty. Three would be my minimum. So, with all the through bolts in there, we put our lock in. Everything is working perfectly. We have nice, even gaps. There is no binding, no scraping of any kind. So, the last step is to cover these up. These come with covers. Once the covers go on, they do not come off without destroying them. So make sure you are good to go. Since I cut the hinge, you're gonna have to cut the covers. So we're going to put on the, uh, the wire cover first. This goes over the um, through bolts. And you'll see there's a set screw in here. And that holds this thing in place, keeps it from going up and down. So the set screw has to be facing away from the hinge so you can get access to it. So that's how you know which way it goes on. And then you see here, this wider edge and this short edge. This wider edge clips in first, and then this shorter edge gets pounded down. You can use a, a rubber mallet, or you can use some sort of banging block to hit that on. You have to hit it hard. Like I said, once they're on, they don't come off, so get it right. <laughs> and you, you feel it click on there. Now you see, once that's on there, this thing can slide up and down. So I get it set using the Allen wrench that comes with the kit. I tighten it up down here. So with that set screw tightened, this thing can no longer move up and down and it definitely cannot pop off. Now you have this thinner trim piece 
that goes over the screws where it's screwed into the frame. And this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way you put it on. But once again, just hook it on one side. I just work it on the top first and get it even. And then just sort of work my way down again with the rubber mallet. And you, you feel it go into place. Storm just installed a continuous hinge. Show us how it works.